Ladies and gentlemen, this is your NXT review on Tuesday night, June 22nd, 2021. I am Joseph Conlon. Welcome to the Big Fight Field channel here tonight. We're here to talk about NXT. We were not here last week for the review, but we got the return of the enforcer, Samoa Joe. We are building towards Great American Bash on July 6th, and I thought tonight's NXT was really good. Got my co-host here tonight. We are back for the first time since NXT TakeOver in your house. Mr. Cameron Johnson, how are you, my friend? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Doing good, man. Always a blast to be here on Big Fight Field. You know, always a blast to be here on Big Fight Field. This is our first time doing this show since TakeOver in your house. But you know what, man? And you know what, man? I'm not even mad at And you know what, man? I'm not even mad at that, man. I don't even feel some type of way about that at all. Joseph is out here living his best life. I'm out here living my best life. I'm just happy to be on the show once again, man. I'm just happy to be on the show again. Uh, NXT tonight was another really good show. Not as good as last week's show, but still a very good show. And it was still a very good show. And just a step in the right direction. You know, I like some of the stories. You know, I like some of the views. You know, I, you know, I thought we had some good wrestling tonight. I like some of the views they've set up. And I like, the, you know, and I like this new faction we got on NXT. So, uh, so overall... I would call it a good show, but it's always a blast to be here on Big Fight Field, man. Absolutely, man. We got we, the in ring action tonight was freaking awesome. I thought we got three really good matches tonight. You had one in the opener, you had one in the middle, and then you had the main event with Kyle O'Reilly and Kushida. You had three really good matches. You had build for Great American Bash, which I feel like is getting more build. Then take over in your house, and that show is on July 6th. Right now, for that show, we have Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. One-on-one -on -one singles match. Should be amazing. Uh, you ha We have uh, your boys, Cam, Tommaso Ciampa, and Toothless Timmy against MSK for the Tag Team Championships. And then that's the only match is announced right now. But it's looking really good for Great American Bash, and I'm excited. We could be seeing Santos Escobar versus Bronson Reed, Johnny Gargano versus Karrion Cross for the NXT Championship, and next week we're getting a three-way uh, women's tag match where the winners are going to face uh, Kenneth LeRae and Indy Hartwell for the tag team titles at the Great American Bash. Which I, I right now, if that's their card. I think that's a great card for the Great American Bash. So what are your thoughts on this show so far? And what are your hopes for Great American Bash on July 6th, which they're building up to be a big show? Uh, great American, well, I like the f well, I like the fact that NXT, I like the fact that with NXT, since they only do a couple takeovers a year, I like the fact that they take a show every now and then, every now and then, and they give it a big, you know, and they give it a big feel. You know, last year's Great American Bash show, I you know, last year's Great American Bash show, I thought was really good. You know, I thought it was really good. You know, I thought it was really good. They did the two night thing because you know they did the two night thing because they're competing with Fighter Fest. You know, they had AEW on the mind when they did Great American Bash last year. But still, though, even though you know they only did Great American Bash last year to combat AEW. Uh, in my personal opinion, I thought uh, in Great American Bash last year was a very good show. And I like the fact that with NXT, we get these special. I like the fact that with NXT, we get these special shows. You know, it's one of the things I like about NXT and AEW uh, are these special shows. I think the main roster, in particular on SmackDown, and in particular on SmackDown, could learn from having, you know, could learn from having these special shows. So I like the special shows we're getting. Great American Bash last year was excellent. This year, the card looks. This year, the card looks absolutely great with Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. I assume Johnny Gargano and Kane Cross is going to be added to that show. Uh, I, I assume that match is going to be added to the show. We got the NXT Tag Team Titles, uh, MSK against Toothless Timmy. You know, in a, you know, against Toothless Timmy and Tommaso Ciampa, uh, and then we have, you know, then we have the uh, women's tag team titles. You now we have the women's tag team titles, and I think something big is happening on that show. I think the turn with Dakota and Raquel happens on that show. 
But I thought this was uh, I thought this was a damn good show, man. Uh, but uh, but uh, I think uh, Great American Bash is going to be a damn good show, man. I do. I think it's going to be a damn good show. Yeah, man, absolutely. It was a really good show tonight. Yes. Uh, I'm just very excited for um, NXT. I, I need NXT. A- as you guys know, if you, you guys know me for college and upcoming, I just need NXT to get out of the CWC right now. Come back to full sale. They really need that full sale energy. And you know there, I'll, I'll I'll be studying hard in college, of course, but I'll be there. I'll be I'll be there, full sale live every Tuesday night. So I'm very excited for that. We need that energy in NXT, and the shows gonna the shows are gonna be great every week. I feel like so. Yeah, of course. Oh, not only that. Oh yeah, of course. Not only we have a great American Bash. I'm sorry to cut you off, but July is gonna be a great month of wrestling, man. July is going to be a great month of wrestling, and that's great because that's my birthday month. But July is going to be a great month. July is going to be a fun month of wrestling. It's going to be a fun month of wrestling. Not only do we have Great American Bash, not only do we have Money in the Bank, which Money in the Bank, uh, you know, even though the card for Money in the Bank might not be exciting, uh, Money in the Bank is still my favorite pay-per-view of the year. Not only do we have that, but we have eight, and not only do we have that, but we have the AEW shows. You know, we got Road Rager, and we got Road Rager, we got Fighter Fest, and we got Fight for the Fallen. So July is like so July is looking like it's gonna be a fun month for wrestling, man. If you are a wrestling fan, do not miss the month of July. The month of July is gonna be great. Are you going to fight for the fallen? I sure am going to fight for the fallen. I will be there. I got my tickets purchased. I'm ready to go. Fight for the Fallen, Cameron Johnson will be there in North Carolina. Should be a great show. But, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely excited, man. July is going to kick ass for professional wrestling. But before we dive into everything NXT-related tonight, if you guys haven't already, be sure to check out the Hell in a Cell review from Sunday night where we went over everything that happened on Hell in a Cell. We are approaching almost... 1.4 1.4 thousand uh, views on that video, so go ahead and check that out. And then we got Monday Night Raw last night, which is approaching 100 views, so if you have not already, be sure to go check out those two reviews um, if you have not already up on the channel right now. NXT started off tonight with Adam Cole got on a microphone and talked about how Samoa Joe choked him out last week, which, by the way, that I, we did not cover NXT last week. That was brilliant. I absolutely loved that. When Samoa Joe got pushed by Adam Cole, he goes over there and he chokes him out. Absolutely amazing, man. I loved that so much. Um, he talks about how Adam Cole is still going to run things in NXT, and Kyle O'Reilly is going to know that when they have their second match at the Great American Bash, and then he's interrupted by Carmelo Hayes, who gets a chant of, who are you? And then he gets a, he cuts a promo, and he says, what are you doing out here? And he, he challenges him to a match, and he says he's going to make Adam Cole change his mind. And he said... How are you going to make me change your mind? And Carmelo Hayes says, ruthless aggression. So that's a throwback to what John Cena said to Kurt Angle on his debut when he's like, ruthless aggression. So we had the match between them. Uh, Before we get to the match, which I thought the match was really good. I thought the ruthless aggression line. I you might. I think you're gonna disagree with me with this. I thought the ruthless aggression line felt really forced. Uh, the uh, nobody knows who this guy is, really, in Carmelo Hayes, and it just doesn't. It doesn't feel. It didn't really feel like a big deal, and to me, it just came off a little bit forced. What do you think? Because I think you thought differently about this. 
Uh, well, I enjoy. Well, uh, I enjoyed the. Uh, I, I enjoyed the opening. No, I enjoyed the opening segment. You know that nice little promo there. You know the nice little. Pro- uh, I thought it was a nice little promo there. You know, uh, with the ruthless aggression line. I, you know, and you know to your, and, you, know, and, you know to your point, you said that nobody knows who Carmelo Hayes is. Now, now I, am no, now I am in no way trying to say Carmelo Hayes is going to go on to become the star that this guy went on to become. But SmackDown 2002, when John Cena set that same line to Kurt Angle, ruthless aggression. You know, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure you have some people. You know, you know, I'm sure you have some people going, "Who the hell is this guy? You know, who the hell is this guy in those trucks and everything?" And then, you know, we obviously know who John Cena went on to become. He went on to become. He, he went on to become one of the biggest stars in the company's ever produced. And you know, that debut there is very. You know, that debut there is very memorable. Uh, and that debut there is very memorable. I'm not trying to say Carmelo Hayes is going to have the career John Cena had. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say he's going to become the star that he is. But I enjoyed. But I enjoyed the opening. You know. You know. I. You know. I enjoyed. You know. But I enjoyed the. I enjoyed that opening segment. I did. I appreciate the. I appreciated the callback to ruthless. You know, to the ruthless aggression line. Cena being my favorite wrestler of all time. I, I enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed that little opening segment there. Yeah. One thing I enjoyed was their match. This match was really good. Carmelo Hayes, in his first match in NXT, he hung with Kushida, which I was impressed by. This guy hung with Adam freaking Cole, one of the best wrestlers in the entire world. That says a lot, man. He hung with Adam Cole. He took the L. Uh, Carmelo took the L, but he hung in there with uh, one of the best in the world, I think, in Adam Cole. Uh, we we might have a candidate for best sell of the year because my goodness, the Panama sunrise that he took that and the crazy. way he stood on his head after that for a few seconds and then just fell, that was freaking excellent. Absolutely loved it. And then Adam Cole hit the last shot and they were going back and forth. Hayes got a couple high spots. Adam Cole did his usual Yushi Kuroshi, but man, the, the the spotlight best part of that match was the Panama Sunrise that Carmelo Hayes sold excellent, and he loses to Adam Cole, but he is a very good professional wrestler. I was I might have not been a fan of the opening segment, but for this match, this match was really good, and I I, I enjoyed this match. If you guys have you, there's three matches you guys got to go check out. If you have if you did not watch NXT, this is one of them. You should definitely go ahead and check this out, man. Really really good. What did you think of the match, Mr. Johnson? I love this match a lot, man. I love this match. I was a big fan of this match. Uh this I was a big fan of this match. This match was really it, this was a fun opener. This was a really fun opener, and I like. This is a really fun opener, and I like the fact that even though, and, you know that, and, you know, and I like the fact that even though Carmelo Hayes did not get the win uh, over Kushida or Adam Cole, and let's be honest, he should not have won any. He should not have won either of those matches. Uh, I like the fact that he was put in the ring with those guys and that he hung with them. Now, I like the fact that he was made to look, you know, I like the fact that he was made to look equal to those guys. I thought this match here with Adam Cole was a, I thought this match with Adam Cole was a great showcase. Uh, there was a spot in this match, or there was a spot in this match where Adam Cole, I think Adam Cole went, I think Adam Cole went for the Yushi Groshi. I think, don't uh, you know, get me wrong, the Yushi Groshi is, I think that's, I think I think the Yushi Groshi is where he holds the guy up in a suplex position and drops him on his knee. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember a spot where I think Adam Cole was going for that, but Carmelo Hayes was able to counter into a night. But Carmelo Hayes was able to counter into a nice cutter. I really that that was a really nice spot there. I really enjoyed that spot there. I really enjoyed that spot there. But uh, I thought the match was really. I thought the match was really good. I like the fact. You know, that Carmelo Hayes was able to hang with Adam Cole and the finish was great. You know, the Panama Sunrise, that you know, Panama Sunrise, that long sell. That that was great, man. That that was great. That was off to a great start for me, man. And Carmelo Hayes is gonna have a big I think Carmelo Hayes is gonna have a big, big future. You know, you know, when you know, when a lot of these guys get caught up to the main roster, unfortunately, because they because the main roster really doesn't have a choice, you know, they got 
you know, because the main roster really doesn't have a choice with all the guys that got released. They're gonna have to call some guys up, and when they do, I think Chris. And when they do, I think Carmelo Hayes is gonna be. I think he's gonna have a nice little role for himself in the next team. I, I, I want to see. I want to see more from this guy, and I want to see where he and I want to see what he does in NXT. I like this match a lot, man. This match is fun. This is a fun opener. Badass sale too. Oh, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. You definitely yeah. love that opening match. Was it your favorite match of the night? It was. It was. It was. The opener was my favorite match of the night. It was. The opener was my favorite match of the night. Followed by the tag match with Dunn. Uh, followed by the tag match, followed by uh, Kushida and O'Reilly. A lot of great wrestling tonight, man. So all I care about. Is it, is it this hard, WWE, to do this <laughs> around SmackDown? Have guys go out there, have some great have some great wrestling and booking that makes sense? Is it this hard? Triple H and Shawn Michaels and Road Dog can do it in NXT. Why the fuck can't y'all do it on Raw? SmackDown at least is okay. Why the fuck can we get this on Raw? Oh, I'm sorry about dropping the F-bombs on your channel. <laughs> I don't care. Um, yeah, there's, there's good matches on Raw, but the rest of the stuff kind of sucks. And when you only have two good matches last night, people were saying, oh, we got some good wrestling on the show. Raw was good last night. Like, what the heck? You know, ridiculous, man. But we're going to move on here. Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory came out. And Johnny Wrestling said we have Samoa Joe around here now. And he got new things in upper management and the enforcer. And we need new things around here as well. We need a new NXT champion. Not some big, bald guy who pretends to be tough. Carrying around the NXT title. And then he was soonly interrupted by Peter Dunn who said, you must be crazy if you think you're going to get in front of the line of me. And they broke out into a brawl. Or, or no, he told uh, Pete Dunne told Austin Theory to shut up. Theory got really offended by this. Johnny Gargano said, we're not going to fight right now. Austin Theory got in Dunne's face. He got his poor fingers broken. Johnny Gargano went to the William Regal's office, and uh, he said... Is something needs to be fixed about this. And Regal's like, yeah, you're right. We're going to have a tag team match. You and Austin Theory versus Pete Dunne and Noni Lorcan. So we will get to that. But this was a short, quick uh, segment. And we have more Karrion Cross and Johnny Gargano later in the show. Uh, quick thoughts on the segment. Uh, I thought the segment was fine, and the thing I like most about this, and you know, the thing I like most about this segment is that this segment had a purpose. You know, we had Johnny Gargano talking about how Karrion Cross, you know, we had Johnny Gargano talking about how Karrion Cross is this big meathead. Well, Karrion Cross, after his woke well, after Johnny Gargano got done wrestling his match, Karrion Cross made Johnny Gargano pay for that. You know, Karrion Cross made Johnny Gargano eat his words for that. So. That's what I like about this segment is that it actually led to something other than a standard tag team match. Mm -hmm. We got all matches to talk about now. And the, we had Io Shirai and Zoe Stark against Aaliyah and Jesse Kamea of the Robert Stone brand. This match was fine for what it was. I believe Io Shirai got the win over uh, Jesse Kamea, I believe it was. It was really all about the post match, uh, the post match um, angle. So what happened at the end was Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, they came out, and Io and, and Zoe Stark were signaling that they want next for a shot at the women's tag team titles. Then you hear Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai say, "If you if you if you two think that." You're getting a shot before us. You must be crazy. We've been here together for a, a, a longer than a year. And Io Shirai just came back and found herself a new buddy in Zoe Stark. And then out came Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. They come out. They get themselves into the frame. Then we have a big three-team brawl with Moon and Shotzi, uh, Zoe and Io Shirai, and... Um, Raquel Gonzalez at Dakota Kai. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell stay out of their own. They stay out of the fight. 
They um, they let the three teams fight. Samoa Joe comes out. He calls for security, and that was the segment. And it's being set up that next week we're getting a three-way tag team match with Io Shirai and Zoe Stark, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, and Ember Moon and Shati Blackheart. Man, you got five talented women. I'm not going to include Zoe Stark because I, I'm not really a fan of her that much. But uh, we got five really talented women in that ring at one time. You put them in one match, and this is going to be a great match. Very excited for next week. Cam, what was your thoughts on these tag te- on this tag team match, and who is walking out of this triple threat tag match next week? to face uh, Candice and Indy at the Great American Bash? Uh, well, uh, well uh, I thought the tag team uh, I thought the tag team match was fine. You know, standard. I thought the tag team match was fine. You know, standard tag team match. Nothing much to it. You know, nothing much to it. Uh, the, uh, you know, but uh, in terms of who wins next week, well, first off, I like the fact that, you know, first off, I, uh, first off, I can't stand when uh, WWE d- does these segments. You know, you have one person come out, then you have the other team come out, then you have this person come out, and they all uh, make their claim as to why they want the uh, title. I can't stand when WWE does that segment, uh, but I understand why they. But I understand why they did it here, so I'll tolerate it. You know, so I'll tolerate it. Uh, in terms of who wins next week, uh, I look. I love Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. I hope to God those women do not win. I am sick to death. A shot seen Ember against the way. So, uh, against the way. So, I hope they don't win it. I don't think they are anyway. Uh, I think the two likely candidates in this match are EO and Zoe Starks, which, uh, EO and Zoe Starks, uh, that's my pick to win. But I also think if they do Dakota and Raquel on that show, I think that's where the turn happens. You know, I think that's where the turn happens. Uh, the only thing is, I don't know who turns on who. When that happens, so uh, when that happens, but my pick for next, uh, but my pick for the win next week is probably EO and Zoe. I think EO and Zoe go on to Great American Bash next week. I agree, it makes the most sense. They're all they're the only faces that are in the match, and it makes the most sense. I don't know how they do. Hey, maybe they do the turn next week. Maybe one of those two women turn on each other next week. I doubt it's going to be on a random NXT show, but we'll have to wait and see. But I'm going to go with Io Shirai and Zoe Stark to win the match, just like you said. So should be a great match, though. Really looking forward to it. We'll have to see what happens. Then we had Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory versus Pete Dunne and Noni Lorcan. This was my favorite match of the night. This was awesome. This was a really awesome tag team match. The few people in the CWC were hot for this. Um, Johnny Gargano was getting a big ovation uh, during the match. His performance, um, you had slow. It was slow in the beginning with Pete Dunne, and then it picked up with Johnny and Austin. Uh, This match paced really, really well. I was into it the whole time, and the baby faces got the big comeback. Johnny hit the uh, uh, DD. I, I don't know what he calls his finisher. The final, the final beat, I think, or something like that. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, the final beat. Yep, he hits the final beat onto Oni Lorkin, and he gets the win for himself and Austin Theory. This was an awesome tag team match. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, the, the pace of it was really nice. If you guys have not checked out this match, I, I would go do yourself a favor and go check out this match for about 15 minutes. But after the match, Johnny is celebrating and he gets laid out with a forearm by Karrion Cross, And that is signaling a match at the Great American Bash between Johnny Organo and Karrion Cross. What I like about this is it feels like carry, it feels like when Cross won the title, uh, NXT Triple H didn't know if they wanted him to be a babyface or a heel. I think after last week and this week with Johnny Gargano, 
I think this solidifies him as a heel, and he's much, he's much better as a heel, confronting William Regal, being like, just say you're going to retire, old man, and stuff. That was great. And I love that they solidified Cross as a uh, as a heel. And I think he should, when they do the match at Great American Bash, because it's more than likely going to happen now, uh, he should absolutely slaughter Johnny Gargano, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm in agreement with you, man. Uh, this tag team match was a lot of fun. This was a really fun tag team match, man. Johnny Gargano uh, Johnny Gargano in this match was going absolutely wild, and it was a lot of fun. You know, and it was a lot of fun to watch Johnny Gargano when they run wild. And I miss this Johnny Gargano, man. Johnny Gargano that went absolutely wild and was the best baby face in all of wrestling. This is what I, that is, that's what I miss. That's what I miss. I'm glad we got a nice little... Uh, I'm glad we got a nice little throwback here, but uh, I might be nitpicking. I might be nitpicking here a bit, but uh, when Austin Theory was trying to make the tag to Johnny Gargano, and Austin Theory was literally, uh, Austin Theory was literally like an inch away from Gargano, and then Oni Lorkin came in. That and then Oni Lorkin came in, and you know, Austin Theory had to fight off Oni Lorkin. He just couldn't tag in Gargano. That that you know that that was that's one. You know, that's that's. That was a point in the match I really hated, but I, I might just be nitpicking there, I'll admit. But uh, outside of that, man, uh, this is a really fun tag team match. Uh, and it looks like the way, specifically Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory, it looks like they're going back baby. You know, it looks like they're going baby face. Looks yeah, like yeah. the way is going, you know, it's like at least Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory. Candace and Indy are still heels. But you know, Candace and Indy are still, he- or, or, uh, still heels. But uh, let's yeah, let's say Johnny Gargano, Austin Fear going babyface. I like our Canyon Cross laid out Gargano, and uh, that match is gonna be you know, that match. Whenever uh, Cross and Gargano happens, that's gonna be really fun. That's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be a nice murder. It's gonna be a nice murder for Johnny Gargano, man. Have you noticed how? Have you noticed how on television we've been getting a lot of murders lately on TV? You notice that, man? We had Dominic get murdered by Roman Reigns. Rey Mysterio got murdered. Xavier Woods got murdered by Lashley. Nikki Cross, Nikki Cross's career got murdered on Raw. Piper Niven's career got murdered. Now we're about to witness another murder with Johnny Gargano and Karen Cross. They need to lay off. Where they need to lay off all the killing they doing down there, man. What the hell going on down there? But uh, in all seriousness, though, uh, that that match is going to be incredible. Oh yeah, I'm very excited about that match. I like I said, I stay with my stance on saying that. Uh, Cross should absolutely slaughter Johnny Gargano in this match, and it shouldn't even be close because is Johnny Gargano's offense going to be believable against Karrion Cross? You think? Uh, to me, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe it depends. It depends on the maybe, maybe it depends. Another, I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm another, gonna just say maybe. Another thing I want to get into really quick before we move on to Frankie Monet. I read a report today on Twitter, um, right, right around twelve o'clock, and there it was room. It's news came out that Karen Cross and Bronson Reed were backstage for tryout matches for Raw and SmackDown. Well, Karen Cross had a match on main event last night against Shelton Benjamin, and his girlfriend Scarlett was not by his side. Well, it was reported that WWE's plan, the main roster's plan, is to bring up Karrion Cross and Scarlett separate and put them alone. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, my me. God. <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me. This is like, this is like, this reminded me when AOP came up for the main roster and on night one, they broke up AOP and Paul Ellery. Like, how dumb is that, dude? That's exactly what it reminded me of. Well, uh, first off, I want to ask, first off, I want to ask, why in the hell is the NXT, why the, Why in the hell are two of the top champions in NXT, why the hell do they need tryout matches, first off? That's what I want to know. Uh, and like, why the hell do they need tryout matches, first off? You know, if you, you know, if you wanted evidence that Vince and Bruce are, you know, that Vince and Bruce are the people in charge of running Raw or SmackDown, do not pay any attention to NXT at all, or do not care about NXT at all. There you go. Why the hell are the top two champions 
we're having tryout matches. And I'm having tryout matches. Like they're first coming into the company and they're not good enough. Why the hell are they doing that? That's one thing. Two, two, this has to be the dumbest idea. This has to be one of the stupidest things they've ever done. Carrying across the Scarlet Bordeaux as a combo is money. They're money. Let me explain to you why they're money. They're not just money because they're a great act. No, you know why else they're money? Because the people who find Karrion Cross boring when he's going to get caught up to Raw, you know, at least they have Scarlett Bardot on the ring. At least they have Scarlett Bardot on ringside to look at during the Karrion Cross match. At, at least. But this has to be so stupid. Stop fixing what don't fix what's not broke. If, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux are a money combo together, heel or babyface. Why are you breaking? Why are you going to break that up when the job comes? And also, Scarlett Bordeaux, from the stuff I've seen of her in the ring, she's not really all that good. I love her, but in the ring, she's not really all that good. So her being in the women's division, I don't think that's going to work out. I don't think that's going to work out. Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux should be kept together at all costs. This is an absolutely stupid idea. If this is true, and why the hell do the top two champions have to wrestle tryout matches? That's all I want to know. What the hell do these people be thinking about? I have no idea, man. But after tonight, which I will, I'll talk about in a little bit, I'm more nervous for about Bronson Reed than I am Karrion Cross, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But really quickly, we got Frankie Monet in her world premiere, which is a match. I, I don't remember the name she was facing, but. She didn't have that bad of a performance. Of course, Frankie Monet won, but it feels like she has no direction in NXT. She was she was supposed to come in. She was this big deal. She had this dog with her. She still does, and she came in the takeover of uh, the NXT after Stand and Deliver, and they really haven't done much with her. They've been doing these world premieres and her walking backstage with the dog. And it feels like she has no direction at all. So I don't know what's going on with Frankie Monet, but, but they, they better do something fast. Uh, well, with Frankie Monet, I would just say I would just say it's a thing of where I would say, and you know, with Frankie Monet, I would say it's a thing of where you know they're you know, you know where, where they're just biding their time right now. Because if you look at the NXT Women's Championship picture and the NXT scene going on right now, you know, you know, we got you know Raquel and Dakota, you know Raquel and Dakota looks like they're about to fuse, so it looks like that match is next. El Shirai looks like she's about to get caught up to the main roster, but I don't understand why. We never got an EO Frankie Monet match while we never got a build to it since we got a tease for it. You know, since we got a tease for it when Frankie Monet was on the main, you know, when Frankie Monet first debuted. You know, if you remember that segment with EO Shrine in the back, Frankie Monet comes around. She's like, I like, she's like, and you know, EO's like, I like cats or something, you know, or something she says. I don't know why we didn't get that. But I would say with Frankie Monet, it's just an issue. Uh, and with Frankie Monet, I would just say, uh, you know, it's a thing of bad timing right now. You know, she just, I don't think she fits in right now to the NXT Women's Championship picture plans right now. Uh, but, you know, the squash match is perfectly fine. But, you know, the squash match is perfectly fine. And uh, one thing I want to mention, you know, and one thing I want to mention, and one thing I want to mention, it looked like, uh, I don't know if this was during the show, or I don't know if this was during the show was shown in the, or shown in the YouTube segment. Uh, Frankie Monet and, uh, you know, Frankie Monet is getting, uh, you know, Frankie Monet Seems to be getting awful close with the Robert Stone brand, uh, Aaliyah and Jesse Kamea. You know, I could see a thing where, you know, I could see a thing where Aaliyah and Jesse Kamea leave the Robert Stone brand to join up with Taya and, you know, to join up with Taya uh, and that, you know, to join up with Taya and that's Taya's little faction uh, down there in NXT. But with Taya, I would just say it's more of a thing of timing. Right now, she just doesn't fit into the NXT Women's Championship picture right now. I think they, you know, they they have other people in front of her. You know, they have other people in front of her. When Raquel gets done with Dakota uh, and when EO gets caught up to the main roster, unfortunately, say a prayer for EO Shirai, I think we'll see a lot more Frankie Monet. <laughs> Very well could happen. Could happen soon. Uh, backstage, we had an interview with Bronson Reed, who's talking about Santos Escobar and how Escobar... He just won't go away, and he gets interrupted by Hit Row, Isaiah Swerve Scott, who doesn't really say much. Uh, top Dollar, 
he has a line at the end. He says, you're not even from North America, and you're the North American champion. I thought that was a little bit funny, but I was nervous, man, because we all we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, that Swerve Scott, uh, on the TakeOver review, actually, for In Your House, Swerve Scott is the guy that you want to take the North American Championship off of Bronson Reed with these tryout matches on Raw and SmackDown for Reed. Is this NXT hot-shotting Bronson Reed to drop the North American title and get caught up or to get caught up to the main roster after after SummerSlam? I certainly hope not because it's way, and I mean way, too soon for him to go up to the main roster, man. He needs to be down there until at least next summer, I think. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you there. I'm in agreement with you there. I think it is way too soon. I think it is way too soon for him to get caught up. But I, I think it, yeah, I think it is way too soon for him to get caught up. So I hope they're not doing that. But again, looking from a, but again, looking from a, and again, I'm not saying I want this to happen. But looking at a WWE standpoint, looking from a Raw SmackDown standpoint, uh, they need talent. You know, they they need people. They need talent. They need people on. They need, you know, they need talent. They need people on those shows. You know, they released a whole bunch, you know, they released a whole bunch of talent. So they need, uh, so they need fresh faces. So I can see them looking at Bronson Reed and going, and so I can see them looking at Bronson Reed and going, we need this guy on Raw SmackDown. Now, no, I don't agree. No, no, I don't agree with that. You know, I don't want, I don't want to see Bronson Reed called out. I don't want to see any NXT talent called out because I have no faith that the main roster at all would do right by these guys. You know, that the main roster would do right by these guys. Uh, so uh, I don't want to see him get caught up, but I see where they're coming from with calling him up because they need people, especially with the draft, you know, especially with the draft. NXT is going to have to be involved in the draft because they need people. They need they need faces on Raw SmackDown. You know, it's what happens when you release, uh, you know, it's what happens when you sign people for, you know, when you sign people for a bunch of money on contracts to keep them away from AEW or other promotions, and then you release, and uh, then you release all that talent. You're going to need talent to fill the two shows of Raw SmackDown. So I see why he's getting caught up. I don't think he should be getting caught up. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. And you know, he's going to end up just like Keith Lee. You watch, Keith Vince McMahon got the reaction of, "Oh, Keith Lee." This guy's big. He's fat. Why do you think? Why do you, he's gonna end up just like Keith Lee? We haven't seen Keith Lee in four months. He's been off of tel- uh, of television si- since uh, February, and I'm not excited for an NXT call up because look what what they do to these guys. They absolutely ruin them. The last guy in recent memory in NXT that I can remember having actual success on the main roster is Matt Riddle. In the oh, last yeah, of in the last three years, I believe one of the only few names that has had success on the main roster is Matt Riddle. And that's pretty sad. Damian Priest, we have not seen Damian Priest since the whole zombie thing. So well, the back well, well the zombies got him. That's where he is. The zombies got you know the zombies got a hold of Damian Priest. You know, he, he either the zombies got a hold of Damian Priest or Damian Priest is on tour with Bad Bunny. So Damian Priest is on tour with Bad Bunny. So that's where he is right now. <laughs> so that's where he is right now. So <laughs> so ridiculous, man. Hit Row. Speaking of good, love Hit Row. They had a tag team match against Ever Rise. Very quick. Uh, Shanti Diadamas and Top Dollar. They get the win over Ever Rise. And um, that was that. Very, very quick match. Five minutes. And that, that, that was it. That, I really have nothing much to say about this. Yeah. Uh, quick match. Oh, by the way, hit row. Oh, by the way, hit row. I don't know what the hell that rap was that was going around on Twitter. I don't know what the hell that rap was that was going around on Twitter, but uh, please, my friends, leave the rap into Isaiah Swerve Scott. Okay, leave the rap into him. If he ain't in it, I don't want to hear it. that track. Y'all, re- that that song or that snippet that got released was hot garbage. Okay, that was hot garbage. 
Okay, that was hot garbage. Y'all are not Isaiah Swerve Scott. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Isaiah Swerve Scott is the best rapper in wrestling. Oh, no, he's not. I'm sorry. The best rapper in wrestling is Max Caster. Can't nobody hold a candle to my boy. Or can't nobody hold a candle to my boy, Max Caster. But Swerve is second. So Hit Row, I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know what the hell that was, but let's leave the rapping to Swerve Scott, okay? But uh, in all seriousness, though, the squash match is fine. And they beat the shit out of Ever Eyes, so I'm happy. I don't like Ever Eyes. Uh, they beat the shit out of Ever Eyes, so I'm happy. I don't like Ever Eyes. Maybe they grow on me, but for the moment, I just find them to be incredibly annoying. So anybody who beats the shit out of Ever Rise, anytime they get the shit beat out of them, I put that in the good category. So yeah, good for him, bro. I know exactly what you're talking about with the with the whole rap thing. That was that was not great. I'll say that for I will, I'll say I'll definitely say that. But next week we have the last show before the Great American Bash special on July 6th. We have. Mercedes Martinez and Jay Gatlas against Xia Lee and Boa. Um, we'll see who's interested in that match. We have a face-to-face -face with Champa and Thatcher versus MSK face-to-face -face before their tag title match. We have Cameron Grimes in action. And we have um, the triple threat number one contender match for the women's tag team titles. Main event. Oh, the main event was awesome. Kyle O'Reilly versus Kushida had very, very high expectations for this one. This was a really good match back and forth. Some great mat wrestling from these two. This one went about 16 minutes. This had very a lot of New Japan. It felt really New Japan influenced to me. We've seen these guys go at it in New Japan Pro Wrestling before. Uh, they had a great match tonight. Really, really enjoyed it. Kushida had the hoverboard lock at the end. O'Reilly rolled him up and got the one, two, three. So Kyle O'Reilly defeats the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, who I feel like, while I hate champions losing in non-title matches, uh, in this instance, I thought Kushida was is, Kushida is losing absolutely nothing from this. And we will get to Kushida in a little bit. But after the match, Adam Cole comes out. He starts brawling with Kyle O'Reilly around the commentary desk. So for a second week in a row, we have O'Reilly and Cole brawling. And yeah, that was after this match. And before we get to the closing sequence, my friend, what did you think of the main event? Well, uh, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and uh, Kushida had a very good match. You know, had a very good match, as they always do. Not a surprise here. Kyle O'Reilly and Kushida are very, two very good professional wrestlers. You know, are two very good professional wrestlers. You know, whenever you look at a card, you know, whenever you look at a wrestling card and you see Kyle O'Reilly versus Kushida is on the card, you, you know, just, you know, just know, you know, you know, just know right away, this match is going to be something special. Just know right away. This is a very good match. Not the best match they, you know, not the best match they've had. Well, not the best match they've had, but still a very, it was still a very good match. It felt, again, to your point, this felt very New Japan, very Ring of Honor esque. Felt like I was watching, felt like I was watching Ring of Honor watching this match here. So, another, you know, nothing wrong with that. Ring of Honor, nothing wrong with that. Ring of Honor is a promotion. They have some great talent over there. So, uh, you know, this is a great, so I thought this was a great match. I, you know, I thought this was a great match. I like the brawling. With Adam Cole and uh, Kyle O'Reilly, uh, uh, you know, with Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, I thought it made sense, and I thought, I thought it made sense, and I thought it was a nice surprise, and I thought it was a nice surprise because when the match ended, I was getting ready, you know, because when the match ended, I was getting ready to come on, I was, I was getting ready to come in here and set up, and then I saw fighting and I saw Adam Cole, so I thought that was a nice little surprise there. So I thought that was a nice little surprise there, you know. Never cut the show off. When you know, never cut the show off after the main event ends. Don't cut the show off until you see, until you see the next show get ready. Until you see the show, you know. Until you see the next show get ready to come on. So I like that. So I like that. I like the Adam Cole surprise, and I like the brawl they had at the end. Absolutely. And then the ending, the ending of the show when came when they were Cole and O'Reilly were brawling. Kushida was just standing in the ring, and he gets attacked from behind. By Roderick Strong, and he's there with Tyler Rust and Malcolm Bivens and some other guy who I unfortunately don't know who his name is, but 
Um, Malcolm Bivens at the end. The whole group is standing over Kushida. Roderick Strong is holding the Cruiserweight Championship. And Malcolm Bivens says, this is Diamond Mind. So out of all these months, this was the big return. The big debut of Diamond Mind. Um, a lot of people were getting really, really uh, impatient with the Diamond Mind debut. And now we got it. They debuted it tonight. Roderick Strong, Tyler Ross, Malcolm Bivens. And their first target is to get the Cruiserweight Championship. So once again, NXT has another faction. And this was the way the show went off the air. What did you think about it, man? I got mixed reactions. I thought it was good, but at the same time, I thought it felt flat. I, I, I agree with you there. I, I agree with you there. It did feel flat. It did feel... I, I agree with you there. It did feel flat. It did feel a bit disappointing, you know, to have this faction built up after all these months. And as Roger Strong, Tyler Russ, some guy we don't know, I'm Malcolm Bivens. So I kind of agree with you there. But So I kind of agree with you there, but... So, you know, I kind of agree with you there, but, you know, uh, I'm looking, for, but, you know, I'm just trying to see where this goes. I want to see where the, you know, I want to see where this go, you know, I want to see where this goes and I want to see what Diamond Mine has to offer in NXT. You know, maybe this is the something. Look, uh, look, uh, this keeps Roger Strong in NXT, so I'm happy about that alone. You know, so I'm happy about that. You know, Roger Strong on the main roster, I got no... F- you know, they're they're going to look at Roger Strong and they're going to be like, what the hell do we do with this guy? And he's going to be on main event every week. I guarantee you that. So it keeps Roger Strong in NXT. That's a plus for me. And, uh, and you know, uh, I'm looking forward to see what they do with this faction. You know, I want to see where this faction goes. Now, I want to see where this faction goes. And, you know, their first sight is the Cruiserweight title. You know, their first sight is the Cruiserweight title. Good on them. You know, start small, then work your way up. That's what I say. And uh, maybe this is something that gets Roger Strong to a main event level. You know, I've been, you know, I don't think Roger Strong, at least as a heel, I don't think Roger Strong is a main event guy. As a baby face, I think he could be a good, as a, as a baby face, I think he could be a good, uh, under, you know, good scrappy underdog baby face in the main event scene. But as a heel, I don't think Roger Strong is a main event guy. So maybe this faction here changes my mind on Roger Strong. And then bringing in Malcolm Bivens is good because Roger Strong, and then bringing in Malcolm Bivens is good. It's good because Malcolm Bivens can do the talking. Because Roger Strong is not a good promo guy. And from what and I haven't heard Tyler Russ, I haven't heard Tyler Russ really speak to know if he's a good promo guy or not. But uh, I like the fact that Malcolm Bivens is with him because Malcolm Bivens can do the talking. And Malcolm Bivens, at least on social media, is very entertaining. You know, you know, Malcolm Bivens, at least on social media, is very entertaining. So hopefully that transfers over to. Uh, so hopefully that transfers over to NXT. But, uh, yeah, it kind of did fall flat, but I want to see where this heads. I want to see where this goes. Overall, I thought this was a very good show, though. We will have to see what happens with Diamond Mine. I'm very going to see what's going to – I'm not going to shit on this all the way yet. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens with the group next. But, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the NXT review tonight here on the channel. I want to thank you all for watching. If you have not already, be sure to go ahead – and hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Comment down below your thoughts about tonight's episode of NXT. Hit the like button. If you like what myself and Cameron Johnson had to say about tonight's NXT show. You can go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. At Conlon underscore Joseph. And my friend Cam, where can they follow you on Twitter, man? Follow me on the Twitter sticks to quote my good friend DJ Storms. Follow me on the Twitter sticks at Cam71101. And also be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the CNE podcast. If you want to promote your podcast real quick, the floor is yours. Make sure you subscribe to the CNE podcast. This week we got an interview with our this week we got an interview with a radioactive poppy Danny Limelight on. I know Joseph Hat. I know Joseph and Wesley had him on the Big Fight Field show and had him on the Big Fight Field channel. That was a great interview. Well, this time me and Escobar get to talk to the radioactive poppy. So make sure you check that out. And July 10th, we got a big show planned. And July 10th, we got a big special draft episode plan of July 10th of the WWE draft. It will be Kyle being joined. It will be Escobar being joined by his uncle Kyle against me, or against myself and Adam, against myself and Adam uh, Bugatti. 
or uh, Adam, I guess, Adam uh, Blagade, I don't know how you pronounce his last name, but Adam Carl 2005 on Twitter, against DJ, against uh, DJ Storms himself, and our good friend, and our good friend, Lil Steve, and our good friend, Stevie, and uh, it's going to be a big draft special, and it's going to be a big draft, and it's going to be a big draft special July 10th, so make sure you check that out, subscribe to the CNE Podcast on all platforms. Should be good, man, should be good. Thank you guys for watching so much. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good night. Stay safe. And as always, man, stay classy.